congratulations. You just got hired to do post-production for your friend's uh, film or short or TV show. And you're going to work on this in Pro Tools. And so you're trying to figure out what's the field recorder guide track workflow and how do I use it? And you're in the right spot. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about why you might want to do it and some of the pitfalls that can happen with uh, working with AAFs and Relink and stuff. So let's just jump right in to a screen share. Uh, you can see here we're talking about FRGT, the Field Recorder Guide Track, in Pro Tools. So not, oh, oof, bad typing. Not all DAWs have this. Pro Tools has it. Uh, Pro Tools is the industry standard for audio post production. So good on you, Avid, for having this. So if you got hired to do audio post, the first thing you're going to end up dealing with is you are hopefully going to get an AAF of the timeline. This is going to have all the clips that the editors used. These will be just audio clips, though. So all the takes that they've used in the cut, it might have temp music sound effects, but really you're just looking to get started on the dialogue edit. And they're also going to give you a folder of production sound. This should include all of the takes that the production sound recordist or mixer recorded on set on lower budget productions. This is going to be from like a Zoom recorder. Um, but, you know, hopefully it's like a sound devices or something where there's metadata intact and you can relink to these. So in Pro Tools, you need to create a new session. We're just going to call this uh, Super Awesome FRGT. Oh, I usually call it like an AAF because that lets me know I'm starting just from the AAF. And sure, we'll call it there. So we're just starting with a blank session with nothing in it. And the you know this is going to be kind of where you bring everything in and get all your ducks in order before you start editing the dialogue. So the first thing I need to do is get the AAF, which is the packaged audio from the timeline of the picture editor, whether they cut in Final Cut, Avid, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, you know, whatever. It's, their, it's all the audio that they've cut. So we're going to import, and you can do Shift, Option, I, or you can go File, Import, Session, Data. We're going to go to this AAF. Let's see what the name is. Super Awesome Dialogue Scene Version 27 Final Final dot Copy dot AAF. So they did a great job naming it. We're going to open that. And I can see here on Import Session Data, we have two dialogue tracks. Um, this is a very basic tutorial, so I didn't want to have too many tracks for you guys to deal with. Go ahead and just do link to source media. You can do force to target session format. What that this option will do is take all the audio out of there, process it, and put it in the audio files folder. Um, it's a good idea to do that when the session is going to be moving around a lot, so we'll go ahead and do that. I was going to do link to source media just to create less files, but I'll do this the proper way, forced to target session format. So that's going to bring in a bunch of tracks. Let's see, first off, if the editor got their... Okay, it looks like they got things starting at about hour one, two, zero, one. I don't have any video with this. This is just audio. So I can show you this. So at this point, you've got the AAF opened up and, you know, all the audio... Looks like It looks like they just did one track and they did a, a B cut here because there's some overlap. And the file name is scene three, take one. This one's three, Apple or Alpha, take two. So, so far so good. The problem with this is we can look at the file and see it's a mono mix. And this is the point where, going back to our kind of overview... Once you get to, you know, you've imported the AAF, you check it out, and they did not, the editor did not use polywave production sound. In other words, this production sound probably has more than just a mono mix, and you're not going to want to use the mono mix because it's going to be a sum of all of the different microphones. You want to have all the different channels on their own tracks so that you can do things like align the boom to the lav, or just use the boom, or if there's a noise on the lab, it's not mixed in, you want to go back to the original production sound. And that's what is awesome about this field recorder 
um, guide track workflow is that you can bring that stuff in without hand syncing it and without running a separate program, just all within Pro Tools. And there's a couple things we need to set up. The first thing we need to do, whatever tracks we're gonna use for syncing and bringing the stuff in, we need to highlight, we need to right click, and we need to make them field recorder guide tracks. So this is going to now have a check mark on here. If I right click again, you can see that is selected. The next thing we need to do is figure out the match criteria. So sometimes you have to play around with this pane a little bit and it's going to always look at time code, but then it's also going to look at any, and you can change this to all of the following, any of the following, the file creation date, tape, sound roll name. You, you do wanna check first five characters in the file name. That is crucial. And it's very important also to change this value if, for example, the file names are longer. On some of the Zaxcom recorders, you get longer file names, um, but if they've done everything properly on their end with the picture editing side of stuff, all the metadata, in other words, the stuff that tells the information about the takes should be intact when they give you this AAF. And it's, it's sometimes a good idea to have them send you what's called an embedded AAF. Uh, and I have a video on exporting from DaVinci Resolve. You can check that out for details on that. But an embedded AAF, if we go back to Finder here, you can see this is just one file with the audio included, kind of zipped up, you know, like an Amazon box taped up. It includes the, the data and the audio. Sometimes you'll have an, an AAF, a very small one, with a folder of audio files. That will often strip that metadata out of the files so it makes relinking using the field recorder guide track impossible or very difficult. And you have to monkey around with the names of the files and a bunch of other stuff. So we're gonna try this and see if metadata is intact. But so the first thing, you know, make the tracks field recorder tracks. Make sure when you right click that it says field recorder guide track. Next thing, do the match criteria. And then the final step is telling Pro Tools where to look for these files. So right click either track again, and then go select areas to search. And it's saying, well, where do you wanna look for these files? We don't wanna look in the AAF. We wanna look in the folder of production audio. So save an index and you'll get on big, you know, big projects where it's like 100 gigabytes of production sound, it's gonna take a while to read all the data. So just wait till the task manager is done. And then the way to kind of check if everything is hooked up and working is to just pick a file, right click it, go to matching field recorder channels, and yeah, you guys can see this. So we've got the mono mix, which is yellow, but then kind of uh, italicized, we have the boom, mono mix, and Sheila lav for this clip. They're italicized because Pro Tools has found them in that folder where we told it to search, but it hasn't brought them into the session yet. And I prefer to work this way versus the other option, which is dragging all the production sound into your clip bin. The reason I like to do it this way, where I just tell Pro Tools to look in the production sound folder, is that way I'm not bringing in audio that isn't being used, making a cumbersome large session with a bunch of audio files that we don't need. So the next step is kind of the magic sauce of like the actual process of linking these up. And it's, it couldn't be easier. So I've, I've verified that, you know, these clips, when I right click them, it finds the associated wave files, the poly waves from the um, production sound. And so now I can, I like to do them track by track. So I'm gonna right click and then expand channels to new tracks by match criteria. So it's gonna look at what you set here. It's gonna use this as kind of the rules, and then it's going to sync it up. So expand channels to new tracks by match criteria, and it has synced up our wave files. Now let's just look at this 
is something you do have to kind of be careful of is looking at the names and what, what will happen is this is what we used to sync this is the AAF track and then all these are the files it found it will find its own uh, AAF file in the audio files I don't know why it does it this way but it will sync up to itself so that's one downside is now you have to go through and I just usually delete the mixes because I'm never going to use them unless that's all I have. Um, and then we'll just kind of organize this a little bit. So, so we've got Boom, we've got Bruce Lav, we've got Sheila Lav, Boom, Mono Mix we don't need, and Sheila Lav. And I could do this for the whole thing if I want. But just for, uh, for brevity's sake, we'll just look at this first section here and make sure that it's lined up, it's synced up perfectly, so that's good. And the nice thing about this is I have handles. So I can drag this, this clip all the way out to look for room tone or alt takes, um, you know, and, and really do a good job editing the dialogue. Same with this one. You want to make sure that like people are always on the same tracks if you can. So I'll even label them. For example, Bruce Lav. Pro Tools will usually name them something like, you know, dot A8 or A7. So just name them. And that way when you go to edit the dialogue, you can even use these tracks to edit on. Just bam, just start editing. I like to copy these up to like a real group of dialogue tracks that I'm editing, but um, that's how you do it. You sync it up and verify that it's synced up with the AAF, you know, as close as it can be. That is, I would say, sample accurate. You know, it's out of phase because it's a mixed track, but um, yeah, that is the field recorder guide track workflow. And then another cool thing about this is I don't think, yeah, so these aren't set, but one thing you can do that's kind of cool is if you know, for example, like you're just going to use the boom with this original AAF track set up, you can just do your mic selection like this. Boom, you know, and then just use that for the whole scene if you wanted. I like to cut both mics, but um, that's another way to go about it. So the downside with this workflow is you do have to go through and clean things up after you expand the tracks with the match criteria. You'll have to go and delete the duplicate tracks or sometimes it'll find the wrong thing. And so it takes a little bit of housekeeping to kind of get it to the point where you can actually edit the dialogue. But this comes with Pro Tools, so you're not having to pay for Kraken or edit load or um, or Titan Conform to sync up the production sound, you can do this in Pro Tools. I think it's just Pro Tools Ultimate. So if you're on like Studio or one of the lower plans, you may not have access to this. But if, you, if you're paying for Ultimate and you're hired to do production sound on a video project where you get an AAF and they have good production sound and the editor has not cut with all the channels, you know, they're just using a mono mix, this is a great option for that. So um, hopefully that helps you guys out and uh, kind of a short video. I forget who requested this on one of the live streams, but um, shout out to them and uh, thank you for the idea because this is something that people know about, but they maybe don't know how to do it. So I tried to break it down step by step for you guys. Uh, if you have any kind of tips or tricks or questions about Pro Tools Field Recorder Guide Track uh, workflow, just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Till the next video, I'll see you then.